My first digital camera was the Olympus C1400. That was back in 1998, and it sported 1400 million pixels. I graduated via the C2500, E10, and E20 to the classic E1. That was in 2003, when Olympus solved the eternal problem of dust contaminating the sensor. And then finally, Micro Four Thirds and my current OMD EM1 Mark II. Olympus are great innovators, and when the mirror was finally removed, making way for the electronic finder, their size and weight was much reduced, hence their catchphrase or slogan, reduced to perfection. Add image stabilization, and you have a superb camera system that is highly portable, and can be taken on long treks such as these places, without the need to lug around a hernia kit. Size, weight and portability, they are my first reason. My second is image stabilization. The Four Thirds and subsequent Micro Four Thirds, now they were designed from a blank sheet of paper. Therefore, decisions were made quite early that affected their future development. That included the image stabilizer placed inside the camera and not the lens. Consequently, the camera communicates with the lens via a sophisticated system of contacts. More recently, an image stabilizer has been added to some pro lenses. They work with the camera stabilizer, enabling the photographer to handhold at shutter speeds unheard of and still doubted by some. This shot was taken at half a second, so that was quite easy. But the misericord, because it was in a very dark corner, that took a shutter speed of four seconds. But this, now this serendipity shot of a full moon over Lulworth Cove, that was eight seconds. Heaven knows what I was doing, but anyway, sort that one out, and I am still trying. A further benefit of its highly complex image stabilization is video. Working independently from single image stabilization, it acts as a cradle that levels out unintentional hand and body movements. Consequently, it is possible to pan smoothly to the moving subject, where normally a tripod would be mandatory. Number three are their superb range of lenses that include wide aperture primes and constant aperture zooms. Any manufacturer offering mirrorless cameras today have a lot of catching up to do. The Zuiko 12-100 Pro lens is constant aperture, and whilst its widest aperture of f4 might be considered a drawback, this lens also has its own image stabilizer that works with the camera's stabilizer. I have successfully taken handheld photographs inside stately homes and churches without increasing the ISO above 200. Even after many shoots, the technology still strikes me as mind-boggling. However, if you feel uncomfortable about using an f4 lens in low light, there are, of course, the f1.2 prime lenses, giving at least two extra stops. At 1.2, the depth of field is reduced, and yes, I got caught. Now, who said you cannot have differential focusing with micro four thirds? The technology might be different, but the end result looks very similar, even when you don't want a narrow depth of field. This brings me rather conveniently to number four, which is depth of field. Yes, you can have differential focusing if you want, but the technology, which I understand has something to do with sensor and pixel size, offers more depth of field where required. Now, this is particularly noticeable for creating a sharp foreground and background in low light at f4, but a traditional knowledge of the hyperfocal distance may still be required. 
This additional depth of field also works to your advantage when shooting a landscape with foreground interest, almost by point and shoot. Number five addresses output, that is, what you do with the photograph after it is taken. YouTube may not be a reliable referee, but I can assure you that A3 prints are possible. My work appears in books and magazines, and most picture editors could not care what camera or system I use, so long as it looks okay on their systems. So never mind how you get there. Nevertheless, this image of Leeds Castle, that's the one in Kent, was reproduced successfully, at least to most eyes, on the front cover of Britain magazine. Surprise? Well, possibly because the camera was the E1, dating back to 2003, and it had only 5 million pixels. The quality was fantastic then, but now my current camera has 20 million pixels, goodness knows what it can achieve today.